Welcome to Antil's first webinar for 2012, not without a hitch, uh, in what will henceforth be known as our Undy Empire series. Today, the focus of our webinar will be on replacing yourself using outsourcing, offshoring, and crowdsourcing. My name is James Tuckerman, and I will be your moderator for today. But before we get started, but before we get started, while the latecomers continue, continue to shuffle into the back rows, I think we're, we're just about to top 100 people, and I think we've had about 250 register for this one. A, uh, a small soiree by Antil standards, but an amazing turnout for a uh, webinar promoted in under five days. So while the late attendees shovel into the back rows, I'd like to show you how you can interact with us today. At the side of the screen, you will see a questions box. We'll be having a Q&A at the end, but we'll also be inviting participation and interaction throughout today's webinar. So let's test this out. Why don't we start with one or two or three words about what you, dear listeners and participants, hope to achieve in 2012. So how's this? Why don't you tap out your biggest goal for 2012? So just use the question box and give it a crack. Perhaps share a New Year's resolution something that you want to see happen. Global domination. There we go. There's our first one there. Who's that from? That's from Lloyd. Thank you, Lloyd. Global domination. What a nice start. What else do we have? Lots of people telling me that they can hear me. More profit. Thank you, Alma. To launch my online business. Thank you, Cindy. Fill, fill my order book. Obviously, someone in sales. Chris Pop there. Help build more startups using crowdsourcing and offshoring with getviable.com. Nice plug, Leslie Barry. Oh my goodness, they're coming in thick and fast. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jointy, Jonty, Jonty Rumbold, Upstart Year, Mike Lowe, Rob Bob Keane, Andrew Jones, Marcus Bidey, Prue. I'm not going to attempt your last name, Prue. I'm sorry. Paul Hussey. Wow. That's a lot of a lot of people. In fact, I think I'm going to take a screen grab. So I can show that later. Well, since you've been also frank with me, I'm going to kick things off with a confession. Uh, at Antil, we're outsourcing and crowdsourcing demons. To explain what I mean by that, last year we relaunched our Cool Company Awards branding. Some of you might remember this. And how did we do this? We launched a crowdsourced design competition through Aussie company Design Crowd. Uh, me personally, I no longer can be bothered writing my articles. Doesn't that sound like terrible from someone, an editor to say that? But what I do is I dictate them into my iPhone and a handy transcription service sends them back as a Word, doc, as, as a Word document which a, uh, a colleague then cleans up and posts. And as a third example, some of our longer term readers might remember that in December 2008, when Antil was a print magazine, we launched our magazine 2.0 experiment, which is Australia's first reader-generated magazine, whereby our readers came up with the topics and they even interviewed each other. The cover was designed using 99designs, another Australian crowdsourcing company, and our readers voted to decide the winning cover. He's, here were some examples. By the way, I just skipped over a slide then by accident. If anyone wants to get online today and chat about this on Twitter, our hashtag is UndieEmpire. Hash UndieEmpire. As you can tell, we're a little bit low on staff today, so we might not be able to get back to you quickly, but you can chat with each other. So when it comes to Antil, I think we're pretty savvy when it comes to crowdsourcing and outsourcing. But when I talk to Pete Williams, I honestly feel like a rookie. Pete is our guest speaker today, and I've had the privilege of knowing Pete since he uh, sold the MCG. Go, go look him up on Google and check out his book, How He Sold the MCG. Uh, he's a published author. He's built million-dollar e-commerce sites, a global marketing and communication agency, and get this, an international award-winning telecommunications hardware company, 
But we have him online today because he's an outsourcing extremist. <laughs> Welcome, Pete. Thanks, James. How are you, buddy? Uh, getting there. <laughs> Good. Rough start to today's webinar. Oh, mate, it's brushing out all the cobwebs at the start okay. of the year. It's the first webinar. We've got all the cobwebs out. Now we're on to the gold. Exactly. Exactly. Well, how, how do you want to kick things off today, Pete? Well, let's um, just jump into it and let's jump in the deep end and we can kind of start you know, covering the topic that is outsourcing and growing that um, global empire. But before we do that, I'd love to get uh, a bit of a poll and know you and I discussed this earlier and you can actually launch a poll which um, hopefully is in front of everyone right now. Um, it's been popped up on their screen through GoToWebinar and basically... Love to get an idea of the audience and sort of see where people are at with their actual outsourcing and, and crowdsourcing. So this is one of my favourite bits. I get to watch. I get to watch this in live action. I get to see what happens as people uh, as people putting in their details, banging it out here. Fifty six percent have voted. Let's see if we can get this up to I don't know seventy percent. So if you have oh sixty six percent, gee that's going to happen fast. Seventy percent, seventy one percent. I'll maybe I'll leave it a little. A little bit longer. Oh, gee, there we go. There we go. It seems to have stalled at 76%. So let's see what happens. I'm really hoping I'm pressing the right button here, folks. There we go. Yeah. Rock and roll. Awesome. So 46% have used something like Freelance or Odesk before. But look at this 37%. I have no idea Dang, what we're what? talking about. <laughs> but that's all right. We're going to start with the basics and then we're going to get deep, aren't we, Pete? Sounds good. Absolutely. All right. Well, I might let you, uh, let you kick it off with a bit about you and your background. Fantastic. So let me hide the results. And got your screen back up here. Perfect. So um, do you want to give me access to the screen so I can actually sort of... Uh, walk people through as well, that way it makes it nice and easy and we can sort of streamline this Definitely. really well. Awesome guys, so I guess for the people who um, in that poll, the, the quite a few, um, you know, 40% odd of people who hadn't really done much outsourcing before, I thought we'd just set some context for today just before we get into the real nitty gritty um, action points and stuff like that. So. You know, there's, there's a number of reasons why you'd want to outsource. If you keep moving your mouse, James, I can't control the screen, unfortunately. Oh, sorry, mate. More, the last couple of cobwebs, that's all. Last couple of cobwebs and we're good to go. <laughs> so there's obviously a number of reasons of why you'd outsource. Why would you start actually getting you know, team members um, working on your business and with you to actually build this global empire we're talking about using outsourcing. Well, obviously, one of the key reasons is that as entrepreneurs, we're also time poor. You know, you can't build a multi-million dollar business by yourself. You need team members. And uh, that is one of the reasons you actually want to start outsourcing. Another reason you actually start outsourcing and getting external parties to help you with your business is obviously because you're skill poor. If you're a great mechanic and that's the business you're in or you're a great accountant or a consultant or whatever industry you might be in, you might be really good on the tools, but you're not great at doing the marketing side of things or designing logos or building websites or, or doing the accounts, whatever it might be. So you might be skill poor and that's why obviously you look outside your business for additional And the funny resources. thing is as, as entrepreneurs, we're often big picture people. We're not necessarily great at, uh, at getting the bookkeeping done and, uh, and all those little fiddly things. Absolutely, exactly right. And you know, you've got to really focus on your key competency and let other people help with your business because that way it makes it more efficient. If you can get people who are much more efficient at doing certain tasks than you, obviously it's going to get you results quicker. It's also going to free you up to allow you to be efficient and effective with your own tasks. So you, if you can be more effective with your time and work, as, work on the core competencies of what you do best, letting other people work on their skill sets Again, it's going to give you the results and this global empire much, much quicker. But in, in my mind, the best way to sum all this up and the key reason to outsource is leverage. You can only do so much yourself as an entrepreneur and a business owner. 
So you need to get as much leverage as you can. And there's a great way to really speed up your results is through outsourcing. Now, one thing that was actually mentioned in the, uh, the email that James sent out was this term called geo-arbitrage. And I thought I'd just define that for a lot of people up front because I know um, for people who knew I was going to be on here wanted a bit of clarification around that term. So geo-arbitrage, it's not about hiring cheap staff. We're not here trying to say that we're going to go and grow your business with $2 an hour employees. Yes, that is possible. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> it's, like, let me give you, it's definitely possible. I've got uh, one of our team members who's based in the Philippines who works a 40-hour week for $80. And it's 80 US dollars, mm. so it is absolutely $2 an hour. And I've got a team member like that. I've got other team members that are a bit more experienced and a bit more costly. Because what it's all about is hiring A players cheaper. That's the distinction. And it's a really big distinction because it's about becoming outcome focused. What you want to do is get the right person for the outcome you're trying to achieve and then use geo arbitrage to get that result cheaper. So it's about finding someone using currency differentiations, differentiations, I can't even speak English today, the cobwebs are in my mouth, um, and actually getting these people working for you at a cheaper rate because of their standard of living, their cost of living is different in countries like India and Philippines. So you can get A players and I remember, And I remember when we started to do this, people like looked at me funny and said, aren't you exploiting sort of you know cheap labor in foreign countries? And, 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 and my simple answer was, I'm often hiring highly educated, extremely talented people and paying them above the average wage um, and, and improving their, their, their lives and actually uh, making the world a, a, a more balanced place. I, I think that that's probably simplistic and there's more to it. But it's definitely not, uh, it's, it's definitely not about finding the cheapest labour and, and squeezing the best deal. It's actually about working with people and they become your colleagues. Absolutely, you know, and to, to not harp on that same example before, but the gentleman who works for us, uh, Lyndon, who is $80 an hour, he wanted 60 when he came to me. I get my team members to actually come to me and tell me what they want to work for. Uh, and I said, no, I'm not paying you 60, I'm going to pay you 80. And he just thinks I'm just a savior. And to me, $20 a week is not much different. But he is so loyal and such a hard worker because I'm paying him above what he would otherwise get in the Philippines doing some sort of manual labor. So, you know, it's just all about mm -hmm. the, the economic situation of the country that you're, you're looking at. So we can, we can dig deep into that quite a bit. Another sort of context thing I want to set um, the record straight about up front is the difference between outsourcing and outtasking. Now, outtasking is what actually most people do when they actually consider themselves outsourcing. So outtasking is actually getting one-off jobs done. So going to places like 99designs.com which is a fantastic website that you can actually go and get logo designs or magazine covers designed and things like that. And those designs are done as one-off tasks. So it's, it's a one-off task you get someone else to do for you. Um, business card design, website design, all that sort of stuff. Whereas outsourcing is really business function focused. And what I mean by that is you're actually getting a team member to work with you on a regular basis, part-time or full-time, to do business focused activities which are continual. So it's like hiring a staff member, but that staff member is overseas obviously. So Richard George has just asked how do you identify the A players on Elance without going through the costly trial and error? I think that you're about to answer that question, aren't you? Pete? I will in a few slides time, absolutely. And guys keep the questions coming through. James can sort of uh, you know field those through and we'll definitely make sure we answer everyone's question before we leave today. But a lot of it hopefully will be covered in what I've prepared. Unfortunately, I can't tap out a quick answer if you've got an individual question uh, at the moment just because uh, Pete's got control of the screen, but I can look at your questions and answer them. True. There you go. So do keep them coming. <laughs> so in, in terms of some outtasking examples, just to sort of, again, help this set the context um, right before we, we dig too deep, are uh, these one-off tasks, things like business card design. 99 Designs, as we said, is a great way to get business card designs and logo designs. Website development, you can go to odesk.com and get someone to actually develop a website for you as a one-off task. Yeah. Maybe you need some legal contracts created, some basic sort of uh, legal documentation. I wouldn't go too crazy with high-end uh, documentation getting done on Elance, but things like non-disclosure agreements and sort of basic sort of heads of agreements and stuff like that can absolutely be done as one-off tasks on Elance. 
Um, also copywriting, maybe you need some copywriting done for a, a brochure or, or, or a website or a sales letter. 99 Copywriters is a great option for that as well. And uh, Rob and Natasha, I hope that that answered your question. Beautiful. And software Sorry, development. Pete. So obviously, you know, the iPhone and iPad are these huge things at the moment. Everyone's trying to jump on the software development bandwagon. Well, if you have an idea for an app, you can go to somewhere like freelancer.com and put up a brief, which we'll talk about later, and actually get someone to do a one-off software development for you that you can then go and sell on iTunes. So these are sort of the one-off tasks that are available and fall under the app tasking kind of banner. Um, incidentally, I think it's worth mentioning that another one is Design Crowd. But uh, in Australia, you might not know this, listeners uh, and participants, but in this crowdsourcing space, Australians are, are leading the world. 99designs is an Australian company. Freelancer.com is, is an Australian company. I mentioned Design Crowd before, they're an Australian company. We're doing very well. Um, and uh, um, all, all worthwhile ch while checking out, and some people. Uh, over, over time develop their own preferences about which one they're going to use and Lloyd Perry, I, I won't tell Matt um, that you prefer iDesk. <laughs> Love it. So outsourcing, this is where I think I'd like to sort of spend a lot of time talking about today. We can definitely go into outtasking but I really encourage the sort of people who have a business and are entrepreneurs really look at their outsourcing in the true rules or true, true definition of outsourcing. And just to sort of spare some, spur some ideas and some thoughts when it comes to these ongoing projects you can actually outsource. Because the issue with outtasking is they're one off. It takes a lot to get the result. You have to put a lot up front with the brief and all that sort of stuff to get the result. Uh, so it's a one for one almost ratio. There's not a whole lot of leverage in that. Whereas with outsourcing, if you can pick a, a task or a project that I'm about to show you and have that done on a rinse and repeatable fashion, there's a lot more leverage in that. You train someone once and they continually do it for you. So things like having a virtual assistant or a personal assistant based overseas is definitely great. They can do a lot of your email, correspondence, organizing flowers and all that sort of stuff. Having a customer service team answer a lot of your support queries via email and have that based in the Philippines or in India or something like that. Obviously, I would question whether you want to do the voice-based customer service team, um, particularly with my history in the telecommunications space, but having customer service done um, in a written format can be done anywhere in the world. Ongoing SEO, uh, hopefully a lot of people who are, who are watching and listening today are aware of the internet and how important it is to be ranking well and have your website show up in Google and I'm sure it's a whole other um, webinar at some point but having a team doing your ongoing um, search engine optimization is a great way to outsource on a regular basis. Even getting some of your basic accounting work done, doing the you know, accounts payable invoicing and actually you know, lodging all that basic bookkeeping can easily be done by someone overseas with a shared MyOb account or using services like Xero or um, you know, FreshBooks. There's some great online tools these days that allow you to migrate all your accounting online and then anyone from anywhere in the world can log in with limited access and do a lot of the basic low-level tasks for you, which is fantastic. And also, pay-per-click management. So if you're doing advertising on AdWords and Google that way, then obviously you have someone in the Philippines or in India or in um, you know, Eastern Europe, Europe or anywhere around the world doing this sort of stuff for you on a regular basis. I've noticed that there's a couple of questions which are very specific. Uh, uh, Rob's asking about uh, his marketing company and there's uh, Omar with a promotional merchandise. What are the very specific examples, are, maybe we could leave that until the Q&A if we can. Absolutely. Is that all right? Yeah, definitely for me and hopefully uh, right. we can delve in deep and we can answer some of that stuff because it would be good to sort of answer some of those deep questions at the end and give some examples and hopefully spark some ideas for other people listening in today. So I thought... And Simon, and Simon James, uh, we're not dissing out tasking, we actually love out tasking. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, finding someone to do small jobs for you when you need to get them done is absolutely fantastic. But I think today we're going to be looking at something a little bit grander. On that note, I'll, I'll, qu I'll quit interrupting. Go that's, ahead, Pete. That's all right. That's what we're here for. So, look, I thought I'd share a, a story of like how it all started and probably it would be a very similar experience for a lot of people uh, listening. Um, you've probably picked up a copy of uh, Timmy's book, 4-Hour Workweek, which was a fantastic book, um, Great book. four or five years ago mm. that was released and really put a um, whole out-tasking and outsourcing uh, on the map to the, the greater population. Uh, a lot of people were doing it prior to that, obviously, but Tim really um, 
made it a very, very succinct and compelling argument of why you want to start doing this in your business and obviously in your personal life quite a bit. He um, gave some great examples throughout the book. So like most people, they've grabbed the book and they've gone, yep, I'm going to start doing some stuff. Uh, and like everyone, I um, you know went onto Elance or Odesk and, and tried some little out tasking type tasks. And even actually, my first thing I did was actually do exactly what Tim suggested in the book. I went and hired someone full time. Went and found a uh, recruitment company um, based in the, in India at the time, that and hired someone said, "I want a full time virtual assistant," and got them on board, and lost a lot of money, wasted a lot of time because I had to spend a lot of time training and coaching these people, and it just did not work for me. And like most people, um, you know, the towel was thrown in, and it was like, "Okay, I'm done. This outsourcing stuff does not work." And I think that's the experience for a lot of people. They've tried it and just hasn't worked for them. And I continued to persist with it because I could see the benefits. And what I wanted to share with you over the next sort of half hour or so before we get into the Q&A is the top five or six lessons that I learned as I went through the process to refine uh, what I consider a very good outsourcing process and system now. And we've got a number of people uh, in America, in Spain, and in the Philippines working for us amongst the various businesses that, uh, that James mentioned earlier. So I thought I'd share with you that process and the lessons along the way and really give you some key action points of how you can actually apply this uh, effectively in your business and, and give you the missing puzzle pieces that Tim left out from, from his fantastic book. So the first thing I think is really key is to actually plan out a full rinse and repeat weekly schedule for your VA. And this is very much around the whole outsourcing process and hiring someone on a full-time basis. And you can hire someone to be on your team on a full-time basis to do one-off tasks continually. But the problem with that is what you're doing is actually spending a lot of time continually briefing your team. And the leverage is just not as great because you're having to spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time training people up. And we'll cover some training stuff in a moment. But... I really encourage everyone I speak to to sit down at the very start and go, okay, out of all the stuff I want to outtask, what is it? List them all down, put a time frame next to each of those tasks, i.e. doing accounts payable hypothetically is 20 minutes a week or three hours a week and actually work out what rinse and repeatable stuff that you can train your team on once they can do and take off your to-do list and done on a weekly basis. And then schedule that in because what you might find is that might only work out to 15 hours a week. It might be 10 hours a week. It may be 40 hours a week. Who knows? But so many people go in and jump in the deep end of the outsourcing swimming pool before realizing how much they actually have to give because there's nothing wrong with hiring someone for 20 hours a week and there's plenty of people out there who are just looking for part-time work as freelancers. What I, what I find really important about this, is, uh, and, and this is an evolution that everybody goes through as a business owner, is, is firstly, it really pays to have something like an operations manual. And you don't know what your operations manual will look like until you start documenting all the different things that you need to do in your business. That's one thing. Uh, the second thing is when you start to look at all the different things that you do, you might suddenly discover that you only dedicate something like four hours a week to business development. If you can look at that, and okay, but here's a, here's a rough uh, bit of maths. Imagine that um, you personally are responsible for $4,000 worth of new business development a week. But when you look at what you do over the week and you discover that you only spend four hours on business development, you can logically say, well, an hour of my time is worth $1,000 because I'm dedicating four hours to business development and I'm, on, and I'm making $4,000. When you think about the, the, the your job that way, suddenly you look around and you say, oh my God, I'm spending all this time on bookkeeping and doing this stuff and cleaning up email newsletters and all these different things that could that are taking up all my time when I could actually be outsourcing that to someone for $60 an hour, dedicating more time to business development because I now know that my an hour of my time is worth $1,000. Um, it just seems to me some of this stuff is, uh, is essential business 101, even if you're not doing it for the purpose of outtasking. Or outsourcing. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think what I find talking to a lot of people is they they kind of treat outsourcing almost like monopoly and monopoly money, like it's just a game, and don't really consider it. Well, hang on, how would I approach it if this was my if this was actually happening in my four walls of my business with a real world staff member? You wouldn't hire a full time employee internally without doing due diligence and your planning. So why do people do it without without outsourcing? They kind of just 
think of it as something completely different, which is very interesting. I saw Ian, Ian Hamilton's um, yeah. <laughs> Ian, Ian Hamilton's asked, what is, what is r r rinse and repeat? I think, Pete, you're talking about those sorts of jobs that happen every week and they're not particularly cerebral. you got to get them done. Exactly. Uh, that sort of thing, is that what you're yeah, talking about? Yeah, the rinse and repeat tasks are, to me are, are things that happen continually. So you do it and it has to be done two weeks later. So it might be checking customer support emails. It might be doing accounts payable. It might be uploading a blog post to your blog. It might be checking your... Um, analytics reporting for your website statistics and summarizing the top three action points. Whatever it might be that is just something that has to be done on a regular basis that is not really value adding, it's just something that's actually value needing. It needs to need some value attached to it but it's not actually generating any additional value for you. So this is the sort of stuff that someone else can do for you because again, this is where the difference between outtasking and outsourcing comes in. Like someone could sit down, you could write down all the stuff you could you, you want someone else to do for your business. And if you isolate it and break it into two lists, what is one-off tasks and what is the rinse and repeatable stuff? There might be plenty of one-off tasks like design a blog, design a new logo, build a website, all those sort of one-off tasks we spoke about. But then also isolate what is actually the outsourcing stuff, what is the rinse and repeatable stuff, what are the things on that list that it has to be done on a regular basis. And this is what I'm trying to suggest to a lot of people is take out tasking to the next level and look at actually hiring someone for 10, 20 hours a week to start with and take off some of that rinse and repeatable stuff off your desk. Does that sort of hopefully answer that question, James? I think it does. Perfect. So that's the first thing I think a lot of people need to do. The second thing is when it actually comes to hiring these people. And this applies definitely for the out tasking as much as it does for the outsourcing. And this is obviously a question that came up earlier, is that you know when you hire someone, hire it, like I said, if you are hiring someone for an in-house position, an in-house personal assistant or in-house role, you wouldn't just read a resume and hire someone off that. You would go through the whole proper hiring process. And it's what I refer to as our George Foreman hiring process. We absolutely grill them. We go through that full grilling process. So what I was we wondering actually where you're going with that. Yeah, I thought you were going to say you punch them in the head. Well, it's virtual, <laughs> so we can't them. really do that. So we grill them, the George Foreman grill. Um, so what we do with that, there's a couple of steps. you know. And if you're actually out tasking, um, people who are out tasking, grab a pen and paper because I can give you some, some key suggestions and, and of how you actually go about out tasking. What we do is we'll actually put an advert in, in the out tasking sense up on Elance or Odesk or some of these platforms that are probably worth actually defining to a lot of people who aren't even aware of what these are. Odesk, Elance, Freelancer, they're probably the three biggest um, websites that offer this. And the way I describe it to people, it's like the eBay for services. So you go on there and you put an ad up, so to speak, saying, I want a person to design a website, design a logo, whatever it might be, and people from all around the world go on and bid for your work. They can see what other people have actually bid on. They can bid lower. They can give you examples. They can put their resume up there and they actually bid for your work, which is really, really cool. So that's what these platforms are for those who, who weren't aware. So what I do is when we do that, we'll actually go on and um, put an ad up on Elance and then I'll actually put a couple of extra steps in place. I'll actually ask them some questions to make them self-select because you know, what you find is there's actually companies based in the Philippines and India and, and Asia and things like that where they've got employees whose sole responsibility is just to bid on stuff on these services and they don't really actually take time to uh, add value to their response or their bid. They just literally copy and paste a standard response and just a, a rough ballpark price point. So what I do is I actually ask three specific questions beyond the actual job description. So I might have up there, I need someone to design uh, an A4 brochure, I have the copy available but need someone to actually make it print ready or whatever the task might be. But beyond that, I'll actually put at the bottom, point one, before you respond to this uh, job ad here, I want the very first line of your response to have the word blue. That way I can identify who's actually taking the time to read this properly and contribute as opposed to those who are just copying and pasting. And I'll say that blatantly in my actual job description. And then as I actually go through the responses that come through, I can just automatically self-select and delete the people who don't have the word blue as the very first word of their response. 
So it helps me actually self-serve wow. very, very easily. Second thing I do is I ask them to actually add value. I'll ask them a question like, what have I missed on this brief that you would like to have the answer? And actually get them to think about it and proactively ask a question that relates to the, the project. The third thing is I ask them is, is there anything else you'd suggest I actually do to make this project better? And actually get them to actually add some value in as well because again, you don't want to hire commodities. These, these people are not just commodities. They're actually people who hopefully will work with you on a regular basis. I found my, one of my full-time designers now was actually off an original out-tasked project and he was very, very good in coming back to me. He you know, put blue at the fir- as the first word of his response he asked some intelligent questions of me and made some great suggestions about how about you actually um, consider changing the colors to this color of the design as opposed to your request for orange because of these reasons. And you really want to make sure these people self-select themselves by actually having to jump through a couple of hoops early on. So that's the first thing I do when it comes to out tasking. The second thing I try and do is actually break the job down into sections. Let's say, for example, we're talking about this magazine advert. I'll actually say, what I want to do, I'm going to hire two people for this job and I'm going to get the people to do the first part of the job which is just give me a rough sketch of where they think it will go. I will pay both parties uh, 10% of the job because I consider the the rough sketch 10% of the actual time it will take you to do this whole project and then the best uh, result I get from this first step will get the full job and the remaining 90% of the money. So you pay the two people 10% each for the job and then you roll into the following um, full job for the person who gives the best response. So it saves you having to actually guess out of 30 responses who the best one's going to be. You can pick two or three and just break that job down to the first 10% you can. Maybe it's copywriting. I want you to write the first two paragraphs and you give three people that job that you select, pay them the uh, apportioned amount of that and then obviously the person who gives you the best two paragraphs get the final job. So I I never actually expect people to do something for free. I always ask them when it's this out tasking type scenario I'll obviously remunerate them for that trial, so to speak. So that hopefully helps make that a little bit more efficient. Chris Pop asked, what was the second and the third question? I think the second one is, have I missed something in this brief? And the third question is, can you add something to this project? That's it. Is that about right? That's, hey? that's spot on. So I'll get them. The first thing is just to, something that I can identify them that they've actually taken the time to read the description properly, which is like blue or banana or something weird like that. So... Uh, just to sort of really make it stand out, it makes me giggle as well. So when it, but when it comes to actually hiring someone full time, I'll actually ask them to do a trial. We'll get them to actually send their resume through, and we'll actually then automatically have an email address set up. And this is getting a bit technical, but we may as well go deep. And I want to give as much value as I can. We have an email address, you know, like resumes at, or you know, design resumes at, or whatever particular job is. We'll set up a special email address on our um, Google um, Apps account that will automatically reply to anyone who sends their resume through with a request saying, thanks for your resume, really appreciate it. Before we actually go any further, we want you to actually go to our Wufu page and fill out a survey. Now, Wufu.com is a great survey tool that I know you use a lot, James, that allows you to create very easily interactive online um, questionnaires or surveys. So we'll automatically send everyone, this is what we do in our real world business as well with a lot of the jobs, is when people apply, they automatically get asked to fill out a survey. And that survey will be specific to the job. So it's interesting. Like- I mean, like we we haven't even we haven't even talked about this, but uh, I put up a job ad on our website this uh, past two weeks, and you know what I I did, Pete? I had a I had a Wufu survey. Perfect. Unbelievable that you're suggesting that. I think it's I think it's a smart <laughs> way to do it because again, it's just all about getting into self-select. If no one's going to actually want the job bad enough to respond to the email you sent them and fill out a five-minute survey, it just helps them automatically self-select all the way through. I'm going to answer some questions quickly. Jody Head and Paul Hussey, it's W-U-F-O-O, Wufu, W-U-F-O-O. And uh, Richard George, uh, thank you for saying brilliant suggestions because I was thinking of you as we were answering them after your question earlier. Fantastic. So that's sort of how we go about hiring a full-time person and then obviously we'll get them on Skype uh, and we'll go through that entire process as well of actually having a Skype conversation. And even you know as we go through, it's the resume, Wufu form, small trial, again, obviously, if you've got that rinse and repeat list, you know the type of stuff they should be doing on a regular basis for you. So give them something they can actually try. 
pay them for a couple of hours of work in that scenario uh, or negotiate with them say look obviously I'm looking for a full time person here this is going to be a, a job for you for the next two or three years are you willing to invest two more hours in proving to me that you're the right person and you know and a lot of people I've, I've dealt with this going yeah I'll happily show you that I'm the right person and give you those two hours because remember what we said at the top here it's about hiring A players for your team and A players know the value of proving themselves before they expect a job B and C players, B and C grade players, expect remuneration for everything they do. They won't go through that process. So again, it may be a bit um, very hard and cold, but if you think about it, the A players in your team who have already worked for you or who you've worked with in previous jobs, just think about it. The people who are the A players, they're the people who go that extra mile to prove themselves because they know they're worth it. So they'll be, they'll be willing to actually give you that time for that free trial without having to be reimbursed. So that's the way we go about doing the, our George Foreman method of hiring for either out tasks or outsourced projects. We're getting a lot of questions. Uh, Anthony Gaddy, we will uh, provide what sort of questions we might ask in a Wufu questionnaire at the end during question time. Yep, absolutely. So let's kick on. Okay, I'm after, we're running out of time, we're going through a lot. Yeah, well, we're going. Number three. Um, and by the way, a lot of people asked is, will this be recorded? Yes, it will be recorded and we will make it available on the, on the, uh, on the website. Absolutely. Well, I think that means people are really enjoying it and getting some value. So thank you for those people who are asking that. So the, the third thing I want to share with you is a way to really just reinforce what you can be outsourcing. And it's really looking at everything you do from a core versus mechanics aspect. So if you think about something like, let's say, for example, blog posting. So if you already have a blog for your business or you're an online information marketer and you have a blog. Now let's talk about the actual process it takes to write and publish a blog. There's obviously the, the writing phase, working out the core element of the actual piece of content. There's the putting the words on paper. There's fixing the typos and the grammars, uh, particularly if it's uh, the grammatical areas. If it's me, I clearly showed that I cannot... Uh, to speak grammatically either. Uh, and then it's actually physically laying it out inside WordPress and hitting publish. There's obviously quite a few steps when you break down all the actual mechanics required to create a blog post and post it. But as the entrepreneur and business owner, what's the core element of all of that? It's simply coming up with the content, the actual idea of the content. So the process I've done by looking at that process with the core and mechanics mindset is now all I do myself is I record an audio version of the blog post. I'll just speak through what I want to actually have said in the blog post. I'll then have one of my team transcribe that. Then it goes to an editor who edits that up so it actually sounds coherent and articulate. Then it goes to another team member who then posts it onto the WordPress blog. So all I do in that whole process of actually posting some content online is the core element, which is just the actual underlying message of the article and let the team do the rest of the mechanics. When we first spoke about what you were talk doing about there, because I do something similar, you showed me a presentation, uh, <laughs> a, uh, just, a, just a, a YouTube clip that you put together for somebody else and I'm going to ask permission, can I share that with our readers afterwards because Pete's just given us three steps there to demonstrate what he does with a blog post but in this presentation you took it, you took it um, to the extreme, to seven steps where this blog post was being turned into podcasts and, and, and video presentations and all this other stuff. Do you mind if we yeah, make that absolutely. available to the No, not a problem at all. Space? I'll send you the details. We can, we can, my mind. We can give it out to everybody. But, uh, and I think it's for a lot of people who are doing online information marketing, whether you're a retail footwear store and have a blog about you know, footwear and, and foot issues or whether you're an uh, information marketer selling eBooks, doing the very high-end sort of online marketing stuff, the real message about all this is what's core versus what's mechanics. And if you sort of identify everything you do as an entrepreneur, every time you do something for the next seven days, make a promise to, to me, make a promise to yourself that you're going to identify what if what is the action what of the actions I'm doing right now are just the mechanics that someone else can actually do where there's no value being added. There's no value by someone really fixing up a, a typo. Anyone can do that. Anyone can cut and paste and, and upload to WordPress. There's no specific value you as an entrepreneur or business owner actually add to that part of the process. It's just mechanics. So I really encourage people to actually go through everything they're doing and that'll help identify all the other stuff that you can actually be outsourcing and go from that 10-hour-a-week employee to a 40-hour-a-week employee and save yourself personally 20 to 30 hours of time. Awesome. 
So number four is systems and processes. And this is uh, the work wiki. Now, um, basically what I've developed over time is I realized once I sort of started building the team up and having the, the staff doing these rinse and repeatable processes is that I needed to find a way to clearly communicate the processes to our team and also clearly have a documentation portal, so to speak, that our team could access. And I came across this awesome piece of software called Screen Steps, which is available at screensteps.com. And it's available for, for Mac and Windows, which is really cool. So it's uh, cross-platform. So if you're a Steve Jobs or a Bill Gates kind of guy, you, there's definitely the option here for you. And what it does, it allows you to actually go through the process of doing something, whether it might be simply um, doing a purchase order to a supplier or putting in an AP invoice into your accounting system like Myob. Or it might be going through your Google Analytics account and looking at the reports and pulling out the key pieces of data. Whatever the process is and the system you go through to get an outcome. As you go through every single action, you simply hit a button and it takes a screenshot of the screen at that particular moment. And then you keep going through that whole process, hitting this button every time there's a new uh, action or, or step required. Like hit button A, you do, you do that. Then you take a screenshot. Then you hit button B take a screenshot and at the end it gives you this beautifully formatted document that you can go back in really quickly and annotate and say here's a button to press this is why you press this and you can do a process and have it mapped out in only about 15% more time than it would take you to do it yourself as you're doing it you hit a button what was that one called again that, screensteps.com that screensteps.com and awesome. it's a fantastic piece of software what what I do is I actually use Jing, which yep. is uh, which records what's on your screen, and it takes five, five minute recording, so you can actually just video record yourself doing something, and then upload it, and you've actually demonstrated the steps in uh, in five minutes. Also, um, oh here's Rex Wood has said the same thing. He said Jing will do the similar, including video. Thank you, Rex. Uh, and Chris Pop has said a, a great idea. He had his virtual PA. He's already got one, and he got her to document her job. Yep. So part of her job was to create her own operations manual. Exactly right. That's exactly what we do. And we actually have set up to the next level what I refer to as our work wiki. Uh, and basically what it is, it's fundamentally, um, think of a, a blog is probably the best way to describe it without visually showing you what it is. Um, the blog, and it has each article on the blog is a, a different process. So it's just this entire online documentation that is password protected uh, that our team all have access to. So they can log in. And then inside that area, inside that private blog, they can see all the different processes required from things like, as I said, accounts payable invoices from the telco company to blog posting for the, um, the communications company to uploading um, a, a book that we, we, we write occasionally to, we, we write little articles and small sort of um, reports that we sell on the Kindle for like 99 cents to, to a couple of dollars. So there's a process of that and that's all been mapped out. Uh, and then in there is actually the process of how to actually make a process map and I've got no issue adding that as a, like one of the other things too when we share some other stuff and we can share that actual um, process map of how to actually create a process map. <laughs> um, we can definitely share that and that, that'll show you exactly how we do it with screen steps. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very quickly going to interrupt and answer the 12 people who asked me simultaneously. It is Jing, J-I-N-G, J for James, I for Igloo, N for Nelly, G for Greg, glorified, I don't know. <laughs> moderator.com and in fact I think that we'll probably put together a list of some of these tools afterwards and provide them as, as an ebook. How's that sound Pete? Sounds good easily. I'll get one of my team to do Excellent. that. I'll, you and I, that, That's mechanics and mate. That's mechanics. They can listen to the video again afterwards and they can produce the report. That's a, perfect, that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about mechanics versus core. And um, with Jing, just as a really quick side note, Jing's fantastic in that it absolutely allows you to record your screen and it allows you to take still screenshots. The thing that Screen Steps does beyond that is that as, you, as soon as you take the screenshot, it automatically embeds it into a pre-formatted process documentation. So with Jing, the, the downside is you have to actually take the screenshot, then save the image into like a Word document, for example, manually, then write the annotation. Whereas inside Screen Steps, they take a lot of those mechanics out of that process for you and automate it through software, which is really, really cool. So I'd, I'd highly I just recommend hit record that. And yabber. I just hit record and yabber on for five minutes. Yeah, and, I, and this is something else to sort of, again, not sort of get too deep, but I'll often do that and then actually give that video to the team 
for them to actually go and do it once or twice, refine it once we're cool with the process, and then actually write it up for a future team member just to use the process map. Mm. So the work wiki is a big thing that I actually progressed to once I actually had the staff members and the processes going. This work wiki has been a key for us because as we uh, build our team, put on and more staff, and you know, as every business grows, and even with a, a, an outsourced team, as you, you know, try and get global domination, as we spoke about, is that people are going to progress as managers and higher up doing more senior tasks. So as new people come in, you have this predefined set of processes. And this can work in your real world business either. Like we have this for our telco company, so processes of how to do an order, how to do certain stuff for clients, how to do a whole range of stuff that work inside our real world company and our bricks and mortar business. For our internal staff here, we use that exact same work wiki and process map solution there. Something else I wanted to mention as well is, I remember having a conversation with someone once because I invest a lot of time in our team. I actually require every one of our virtual team members to spend one hour a day on training. One, because it's not that expensive, obviously, as we spoke about before, due to the beautiful geo-arbitrage opportunities. But secondly, it just means you're going to have better quality staff. But someone asked me once a really great question, well, what happens with outsourcers because you know, they're outsourcers and you, know, don't, you don't really have them in your office and all that sort of stuff. What happens if you, you, you train them and they leave? Which is a very fair question. Uh, the response that I heard once, which I now continually uh, regurgitate, is, well, what happens if you don't train them and they stay? So I'm, I'm a big believer in making sure you're really investing your team because you know, if you are paying your team members, as we spoke about, above the odds for their local currency, for their local socio-economic sort of you know, position, and you actually invest in, in training, they ain't going to leave. I've got you know, staff that have been with us for ages and uh, one of them went through a, a terrible um, flood recently with the, the, the typhoon and things that went through the Philippines. And he's actually going to his brother's house in the afternoons and borrowing his computer so he actually can still work for us because he wants to. And, I'll be, and I'm obviously allowing him to sort of take time and stuff, but he's you know, going out of his way to make sure he actually can still keep his job and work with us because he enjoys it so much because obviously we, we treat them well because they're not like commodities. They're not just like random little people outside of office that we don't know. They're, they're real people with, with families and stuff that we get to know. So one of the things we actually do um, is to actually train our team, is a, use a, a service or a, a program that I'm actually a, a member of completely free called The Challenge. It's available at challenge.co not .com, challenge.co. And it's a program that I've been involved with for quite a number of years now where we help people make their very first dollar online. And it's not about making you know, $1,000 or replacing your income. It's just about making your first dollar and getting understanding of the online marketing principles. So what we do is every time a new person joins our team, we, head them, we send them over to challenge.co and they watch these seven modules worth of videos. And literally there's about 20 hours plus worth of content, if not more actually. And we make them watch all of that before they have a single um, major project. They may be doing half their week of you know, introductory sort of low level tasks and the other half in training. And then continually train our staff beyond that with, you know, depending on what their job might be, I might be might invest in a, in a program or a course or something like that or an ebook and then get them to actually devour it and, and really build up their skills because they'll actually start giving you additional value because Again, this is a really funny thing I keep seeing so often is that they, people don't think of their Filipino team as being intelligent, A-grade players. They think of them as being cheap, manual, labor-type people. But if you're hiring A players, as we spoke about before, the amount of value these people will give you is amazing. You know, For $15,000, $20,000 a year, you can get someone with a university degree or a doctorate that would here cost you hundred and fifty grand a year and add that same sort of value to your business. So if you train them and teach them, the amount of additional value they're going, to be, they're going to give you, they're not just going to be mechanics for you. They will actually give you value too. So you've got to make sure you invest and train in them. And I think the challenge is a fantastic platform to do that. Yeah. And just to note, even as an entrepreneur or business owner, it's worthwhile going out that, going to that site and checking those things out. There's just some awesome stuff on that site. I, I thought what I'd also leave, leave everyone with as well is just the, the, the way I do my daily management of our team. Because obviously as our team grows, it, you know, there's more people to manage and all that sort of stuff. So there's, there's a little um, process that I've developed over time that has worked really, really well. So I thought I'd share that with people as well. And it's simply a daily email that I get each of our team members to send me at the end of every day that I look over. It takes me all of 30 seconds. I can do it on my iPhone if I'm out for dinner waiting for um, the mains to come after entree or whether I'm you know, in the car or wherever it might be. I can open up an iPad, an iPhone or my email and manage my team very, very effectively. And it's simply an email that has six points on it. So let's go through these really quickly that people might want to write down and implement in their business right now. 
The first thing is, what was their plan for the day? What were the action points they had to do for the day? Was it, you know, reply to emails, um, you know, do some AP invoicing, whatever it might be. What are the, the 10 sort of tasks they had planned for the day and how long do they expect each of those tasks to take? So roughly sort of what is the breakdown they think it should take? The second point is what was achieved for the day? So out of the stuff in point one, what did they actually achieve and how long did it actually take them to complete? So that way you can get an idea. If someone said something's going to take them two hours but it took them six, you can obviously see where's the disconnect and try and actually help train and coach them along. Third point is what wasn't achieved and why. So I want to know on that list what wasn't achieved and why. Maybe because they ran out of time. Maybe the login details for the site they need to log into was disabled. Maybe they had to leave three messages of someone and they didn't call them back. Whatever it might be, I actually want to know what proactive steps they took to actually achieve all their things. Because I want to teach them to be proactive, outcome-orientated team members, not just mechanics. The fourth thing, as I just mentioned, what training did they do for the day? What video did they watch? What book did they consume? What did they actually learn that day to really reinforce how important it is for us that our team members actually take the training? Uh, the fifth point yeah, is the most beautiful. important point for me personally, and it is what do they need from me and by when? So this is my the main focus for me is that that gives me an action list. What are, what are my action lists? Because if they're accountable to me, I feel I should be accountable to them. So they send me this email with what is the thing they need from me. Maybe they need to me to review the article they've written. Maybe I need to top up the credit cards that they've got access to. Maybe whatever it might be. Uh, and they actually and they're my action points. So I can sit that. I can copy and paste those into my to-do list application and manage it that way. And then the sixth point is simply what's their plan for tomorrow. So this is what they've got on their agenda for tomorrow. So that way I can review that before they start work the following day and reply going, yep, that's all good. Or actually, no, I need you to do this instead. And fundamentally, it's pretty obvious that whatever is point six on today becomes point one <laughs> tomorrow. It's just a copy and paste. And that's how I actually manage our team on a daily basis, just through single email to each person. You know, 10 people takes me 10 minutes to, to manage on a daily basis because it's all about action oriented right? points. This is actually a good uh, segue uh, or, or a way to, to bring it back to the beginning um, because the first slide was when you were isolating the things that you could do that were rinse and repeat tasks. And I have to say, I created a similar email like that for myself about two years ago <laughs> just to find out how I was spending my days. And then when I knew how I was spending my days and what was being valuable time and what was wasteful time, I was then able to find other people to do things that were what did you call them? The the opposite of core, mechanics. mechanical jobs. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mechanics are stuff. This is, this is a good. This is a good practice to apply to yourself. I think. Absolutely, absolutely. And I've got a couple of, um, I guess, def I was going to use the word mentor students, but they're more colleagues of mine that we just sort of keep ourselves accountable. And and I actually make them send me these emails themselves. I don't actually read them, but it's just for, good for them to actually be disciplined, and they love it. I just go straight to a automated mm. filter folder in my Gmail account, but it makes them just be focused on outcomes and actions. So it's kind of cool. Great. So I thought I'd just recap really quickly the five quick start actions. So for people who want to go to the outsourcing level and really you know, dominate the, their global marketplace from their, their lounge room in their underwear, what are, the, what are these five things again, just to really reiterate? So when it comes to outsourcing, which is obviously a key focus for me, is plan a week in the life of your new team member. Because if all you do is do continually out-tasked outsourcing where it's only just one-off stuff, there's not a lot of leverage in that or efficiency because you're continually having to go back to the drawing board and rebrief for a new job and rebrief for the next job and rebrief for the next job. And you're spending a lot of time in your business doing these briefings just to keep your team members active. So what you want to do is work out what is a week in the life of a new team member. What are those rinse and repeatable tasks they can do regularly? Then from there, continually identify what your outsourceable tasks are. Continue to look at everything you do in your business and look at it from a core or mechanic standpoint. What elements of what you're doing is actually mechanics? For example, this webinar today, the creation of these slides is the mechanics. I did a bullet point list of what I wanted each slide to be, handed it to Dom, who's based in, in Spain, and he put these slides together for me this morning because that wasn't core. That was just the mechanics. Me being here talking is core, but the actual construction of the slide set is just mechanics. There's no real value in that. I'm sure you wouldn't have got more value if 
these boxes had rounded corners or there was a really cool transition. That's not where the value is. The value is in the core. So let everyone else do the mechanics and continually refine that on, your, on what you do every single day. Screen yeah, steps the process. I'm disappointed that there weren't any rounded corners. Hey? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll yeah, mention that to Dom. I'll send him an email <laughs> and say, dude, we need a rounded corners. Um, screen steps, right. the process. So as you do stuff, when it comes to the mechanical elements of what you do, screen steps them, step them so you can pass them off. And so even if this rinse and repeat only happens on a quarterly basis or a monthly basis, still, next time you do a task that has a lot of mechanics involved, screen step it. It only takes you an extra couple of minutes to do the entire process because it's that simple and frictionless that you can then have that process for the future. You know, you might say, oh, look, it only takes me an hour to do this. There's no point writing it up. But if it's an hour a month, that's actually 12 hours a year. Why not spend the one hour to do it next time or 20 minutes to write it up and save yourself 10 hours over the year? Think of it as an investment, an ROI on your time. And if you know what an hour of your time is worth, like in the example before I gave it was $1,000, you've just actually saved $12,000 a year or you've provided yourself with the opportunity to make $12,000 that year. Exactly right, exactly right. It's all about doing the numbers and working out what your time is worth. Implement the daily management emails. As you build your team, make sure you implement that because this is the process I developed as I went through from that bumbling, um, outsourced you know, loser, so to speak, to someone who's actually got a very well-refined process, I think. And then finally, I think you do. train them continually. That's the biggest thing. You want to continually train your team members and I can't hand that enough because so many people I hear when they talk about outsourcing is it's just about treating these people as commodities and that's just not the way it should be done. These are, these are people who are going to give you a lot, uh, particularly in the Philippines. I don't know what it is about their culture, but they are just so friendly and so hardworking and so willing to please and give that if you give back to them, you'll get it back tenfold. It's amazing. Like I remember one, one girl, um, Flo, who's my personal VA now, um, I caught her, well not caught her, I saw her reply to some emails on, on a Sunday afternoon and I was like, that's a bit strange, like, hey, great, how good's that? So I sent her a huge bunch of flowers and uh, just as a thank you gift for that, just as, you know, here's a you know, $10 investment to say thanks for working on a weekend and just the actual relationship and her work ethic just, you know, jumped up tenfold. She started saying, look, I, can you give me some e-books and some audio books? I want to start learning stuff outside of hours. So she's definitely an A player because I treated her well and showed her that if she works hard, should get rewarded. It's no different to how you you would um, organize and, and train and develop a team internally here in Australia or wherever you might be listening from. But using geo arbitrage, it's so much more cost effective, and that's the benefit. We still want A players, but we want them more cost effectively. And that pretty much right on one o'clock. How's that for timing? Wow. Well, just in time for questions. Bring them on. There's been some people who've been um, have been quite prolific with their questions and. Uh, I think uh, uh, Richard George is one, and uh, he wanted to know who handles the project management, who who joins the dots. But I think that you may have answered that by saying it's you. But as long as you just do it once and do it well using something like Screen Test, it should be okay. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Who joins the dots? It, well, it comes down to sort of the projects. You know, if it's a if it's a large project, obviously as you grow your team, you know, this is obviously all a scale thing as well. As soon as you have six or seven staff members, you may have someone like Flo, who's my PA, who has been with me for quite a while now and knows what I do and the way I think because she's developed so much and, and you know consumed so much of the core content that I wanted to learn. She kind of understands what I'm after. So we might do uh, a group Skype call with her and the designer or whatever sort of project it might be and talk through the, the overall project scope and then it comes to someone like Flo to, to manage the whole thing through. Uh, obviously, when you're starting well, out with one or two team members... It obviously, it has to be you as that starting point. But again, you know, project management should only be a tenth of the time it takes to do the entire project. And as Chris Pop said before, he, he gets his virtual PA to document her job as well. So she's actually joining her own dots. Exactly. That's building the process for him. Absolutely. Um, uh, someone wanted to know what's a typical uh, trial task earlier on when you were talking about setting up, giving everyone little mini tasks to sink their teeth into. Sure. Look, for example, example, let's say, for example, it's, um, uh, let's hypothetically say it's a virtual assistant type role. So they're going to be doing a lot of different things like setting up and, and coordinating and scheduling webinars like this. It might be one of their tasks that they have to schedule the webinar every week, hypothetically. They might do stuff like um, blog, um, posting articles on the blog. Uh, they might be going off and doing research for trying to find certain people's email addresses, um, hypothetically. So the, the trial task might be, 
here's login details for GoToWebinar. I want you to go and set up a webinar and invite these two email addresses to the webinar. It might be you have, you know, again, depending on, on how you how your business is structured, you might be you might have a, a small Aweber account, or you might have a free account over at Mailchimp, which is an email automated software with a dummy list in there. Um, you might say, hey, I want you to go and send this email to that list inside Mailchimp. Uh, it might be go and find Tim Ferriss's personal email address. Just random one uh, tasks to get see. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that matches. It's like it's like a, it's a mini job. I used to when I used to manage. Uh, uh, when we still used to complain about um, employing Gen Ys before they grew up and became responsible and awesome employees, I used to talk about developing what I called task attainment, which were short jobs with beginnings, middles, and ends that I could give them. Uh, I see that that is an ideal example. Is this um, the, is this get your name in the newspaper story that I remember you sharing with me a couple of years ago? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I know you tell me a story I once don't know where what you... I've what I've said over the years publicly. This is four years ago, but, uh, where you had and... someone try to get their name in the newspaper or something as part of their task. Ah, oh, yes, that was right. I ne I I wanted. Uh, I was when I was working in a PR firm, and now everyone was saying how good they are at media liaison. So I said, okay, if you can get your name in the in the uh, in the TV guide within the next week, you're hired. That was it? And it was pretty funny watching uh, these young gun. Uh, uh, Gen Y is calling up the editor of the uh, Green Guy, trying to convince them to change their, you know, replace hum Humphrey Bogart with their name at the uh, 1 a.m. movie slot. But anyway, uh, Anthony Gaddy asked uh, when we were talking about Wufu before and surveys, he asked us some typical questions. I I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna answer that. Um, uh, I'm gonna steal the answer to that question from you, Pete, because. In the last fortnight, I actually uh, ran a job ad through Antil, not through one of these outsourced sites. But what I did is, uh, to apply for the job, I actually had people submit uh, headlines to for Antil articles using Wufu, the survey builder. So rather than ask the CVs, I asked them to go onto Wufu and uh, and submit uh, headlines that they thought uh, of stories that they thought would look great on Antil. Which was interesting because because each of them submitted nine headlines each, which is quite a quite a significant job uh, to do that to come up with nine headlines. But I wasn't asking to see their CV. I was actually giving them a mini task using Wufu. Yeah, perfect example. Um, other questions. Uh, Peter Vroom, are the contractors paid direct against their invoice or via a third party? Is there a prepay aspect? In terms of my full-time staff, um, they're just PayPal on a weekly basis. In terms, mm -hmm. in terms of like one-off tasks, you can obviously use Odesk and Elance and those sort of platforms have like a, um, a, a escrow type service that they actually um, can manage on, on your behalf if you want to. But when it comes to full-time staff members, I just negotiate with them directly and pay them via PayPal on a, on a weekly basis. And I've found that because uh, I've uh, I've got a very helpful um, East German chap who uh, assembles our email newsletters and makes them look very pretty, and we give him him the instruction of what we want to appear in the email, and then he uh, he assembles it uh, to make it look great in HTML, and um, we've formed a really really close bond, Christian and I, in the sense that uh, I knew when he got married and I sent him a, sent him a, a present. And I heard about his holidays and the and the whole bit, but that relationship began as something that uh, that uh, was on Elance, uh, and the money was transferred through their platform, and then eventually evolved into something which was a one-on-one -on -one relationship where I could pay him through PayPal. Yep. Um. More questions. Uh, oh, there's some very specific ones, like which audio to text translation app do you use? My goodness. Uh, uh, the the app's name is Lynette, and, <laughs> and I think she's about mid forties. Right. No, I don't. Like, in terms of um, solutions and stuff like that, um, there's Mechanical Turk. Um, if people head over to, okay, this is going to noise dot re. So www.noise.re is a weekly newsletter that I send out, um, and the newsletter is simply seven links to really cool stuff I found online the week before. So there's no real pitch, right. there's not nothing, it's just literally seven seven links. And what happens is it goes out on a Sunday and then every day over the following seven days, one of the links is actually published 
for the world to see on, the, on, on that particular site. So if you subscribe, you get it obviously you know, earlier than everybody else. And in this week's edition of the newsletter, I actually linked to a really cool service that does transcriptions using Mechanical Turk. Off the top of my head, I can't remember what that is, but if people go over to noise.re and just subscribe there and at least check it out in the next couple of days, I'm sure it'll be published at some stage this week as the, the link of the day, so to speak. So noise.re. It's, it's, it's 10 past 1. We've still got over 100 people on the line, which means that there are obviously everyone's very interested in what you're talking about, Pete. But what I'll do is I'll quickly hit the, uh, I'll, I'll quickly go through the housekeeping. So we've got that done, and then we can answer, so, a, answer some more questions. But uh, it'll just allow a couple of people if they need to knock off. So I'm just going to quickly do some, some closing remarks and house, housekeeping if, if people want to hurry away or need to hurry away. So firstly, um, when you do knock off, please complete the exit survey. Um, I've written, because you received something awesome from today's speaker, I think it's pretty clear that we're going to get that awesome video that you've put together. We'll have a link to noise.re. I think we're talking about something cool, which uh, uh, Pete and I, which we'll reveal shortly uh, if we can get it together. Um, secondly, you can request a free trial of GoToMeetings or GoToWebinar by Citrix, which is the tool that we use and our, and our webinar sponsor. And also, of course, you'll help us improve our webinars. Yeah, feedback, um, testimonials will be great. What's that? <laughs> you know, yeah, right. Feedback on the staff will be really, really appreciated. I, I need my ego that's stroked. Right. That's, that, that's right. Um, so three plugs. Uh, I'd like to plug our next webinar on the th on Thursday, the 23rd of February, with Jim Stewart. Get to our website and sign up for that. It's a, it's how to master video and YouTube video. Uh, and I think it ties in extremely well with what we're talking about today because if you can do the core, uh, I'm sure that you can find other people to outsource it and that's going to be really entertaining because uh, and educational because Jim Stewart's an awesome guy. So get to anthillonline.com, register for our next web webinar which is on a Thursday this time on the 21st of February, 23rd of February. Uh, on Friday, I'm holding um, a masterclass in Melbourne and then another one in Sydney on the 10th, so Melbourne 3rd of February, Sydney 10th of February. I've got two spots left for Melbourne, four spots left for Sydney. That's my online marketing masterclass. I think you find that out on antmart.com.au. But most importantly, uh, please complete the exit survey because uh, Pete and I are going to devise something grand, aren't we, Pete? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> yep. Plus, uh, we'll send you the uh, noise.re link, the video. And uh, what, now we've got an ebook as well, too, talking about all these different things. It's going to be cool. <laughs> all right, and I guess you know, uh, probably should that. mention too. Obviously, for people who I guess watch the replay of this, I'm sure somewhere on the page there might be a link or, or a description of how to actually get that those downloads after the fact. Yeah, cool. So, yeah. yeah, awesome idea. So let's take some more questions and then uh, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll knock off. Um, Someone wanted to know about the negativity when dealing with um, when they mention. Here we go. Peter Peter has uh, has asked, how do you handle customer negativity negativity towards outsourcing? Many customers want you or people geographically close to you to do the job. I often get asked if I outsource anything. Um, look, I think from in, in the telco space, let's talk about you know, Infinity Telecommunications, the telco company, that obviously um, we don't do any you know cold calling or have any um, actual telephone staff in um, overseas locations because obviously there's just such a huge negative um, correlation with that, which is understandable. Um, but to be honest, in terms of when it comes to email support or that sort of ticket support, um, I have never had any real negativity with that because I think a lot of people who sort of interact with me in that scenario um, have no idea um, that like a lot of my team is based over there and they get a player response. So there's, they're actually getting probably a better response than they would if we potentially hide someone locally because of the dollar value is better as we spoke about with GR arbitrage. In terms of the telco business, to give you some examples, all our outsourcing team work purely in the accounts team or in the marketing department. So I actually have any sort of customer facing roles in that scenario. So there's obviously no negativity with the with customers in that scenario because the, the roles we outsource is admin related stuff. So there's no yeah general face to face time. But in the other businesses, um, no issue at all. It's one of those age-old debates, you know, we used to outsource um, the printing of our magazines in Malaysia and people used to um, criticise us for that. But at the end of the day, um, the factories in Malaysia to print our magazine did a better job and uh, 
and 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 a cheaper job, and that's just the nature of commerce. You find exactly. the best people to do the job at the best price. Yeah, uh, we live in a global planet now, so uh, well, we always lived on a global planet, <laughs> but uh, but the market is global. So uh, and um, you know we have relationships from one end of the globe to the other. Why don't we have employees and staff and contractors from one end of the globe to the other? Well, if you if you want, if you want a global customer base. Which is obviously what we're talking about here. Yeah. You know, doing it in your undies. Um, your customers are going to be from all over the globe, so they're going to expect to have you know people responding to them from all across the world. Um, Nick Redwoods asked through Elance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, have you had more success dealing with individuals or companies? Um, interesting. For, for for larger tasks like you know iPhone app development, you know we've got I don't know half a dozen iPhone and and i and Mac apps um, we've been playing with and they're in the store and available and stuff like that. That has been better with companies, but in terms of individual sort of like copywriting tasks or design work and things like that, that's been better for individuals. Now, I don't really know the science behind that. I haven't really put a lot of thought into it, to be honest. I would say from a gut response would be that things that require a team to produce, and obviously software, you know, there's coding and there's design, there's obviously a lot of people involved in that process. Teams are better. But if the task is only ever needed to be done by one person, I always tend to go for an individual person. I've just generally found better better outcomes for that sort of stuff. I um I personally prefer the individual. I haven't had much success when hiring companies through things like Elance and that sort of yeah. stuff. I much prefer a dedicated individual and I feel like I can form a relationship with them and talk to them and I end up with a dedicated person that works with me. But maybe that's just the way I am. I like dealing with human beings or individuals and I like to form relationships. So I personally have, have, uh, have had much better outcomes dealing with individuals rather than groups, uh, rather than companies. Yep. I think we should probably wind up now. We've gone 15 minutes over time. Um, thank you so much, Pete. I mean, that's been incredible. Incredible. I mean, like I've been writing notes myself like crazy. Not a problem. Um, screen test. That sounds awesome. Mate, really, it's screen steps. Screen steps. Screen steps. We'll, have, we'll, have, we'll put it what in did I say? screen te um, test, I think you said. Well, anyway, <sighs> that's what I heard. But, you know, if like, we're obviously going to make this available on the Ant Hill site somewhere. Um, hopefully there'll be comments on the page that I'll make sure that, that myself and my team monitor to make sure we can continually add value to people who listen to the replay of this or after the fact. Um, but if anyone's got a specific question that hasn't been answered, um, like, I don't mind if James is okay with it, putting out our support email address and they could email me directly and myself and my team will respond with something for you. Which Is, is that okay with you if I share that email address, James? Definitely, definitely. Uh, support at preneurgroup.com. So support at preneurgroup, P-R-E-N-E-U-R group.com. So preneur is in entrepreneur. So support at preneurgroup.com. Any sort of email you've got, uh, I will definitely respond and um, you know, let, mention that obviously you're on this webinar with Ant Hill, uh, so it gets prioritized to the top of my to-do list. And uh, I'll get back to you with specific answers, whether it's personal or just generic that you didn't get a chance to answer today, then uh, let us know. And uh, Rex Wood has already started the virtual clapping. Everybody, let's uh, if you've got your little taskbar open, give me a little virtual clap or a yay or a cheer or a thank you, Pete, whatever it is. There we are. Thank you, Nobby. Bit of a bit of a clap there, much clapping from Neutral Bay. Thanks, Pete and James from Alma Reeves. Clap, clap, clap from Prue uh, Lloyd. Oh, well done. They're all flying in now. I'm going to quickly have to grab a screen grab of that too. I, I love to see those sorts of things. Um, thank you once again, Pete, and uh, look out for us and look out for the email. Lots of more good stuff to come. Signing off. <laughs>